this word is endothermic. So endothermic is a reaction or a process that actually takes in energy in the form of heat from its surrounding area. When you have chemical reactions, some chemical reactions need heat to make them go. The products of the reaction have more energy in them than your starting materials. It will actually suck in this heat energy and it will make it very, very cold. So we'll actually see something that becomes very cold. Either you can measure it with a thermometer or you can actually feel it with your hands getting colder and colder. Chemists have quite a limited view of the world when they're thinking about reactions. They just think about their flask and what's going on in their flask. And all they're interested in is whether heat is flowing out or heat is flowing in. And if a reaction is endothermic, it needs heat to make it go. So heat has to flow in if you want to keep the temperature the same. If you don't mind about the temperature, the endothermic reaction will just make things get cold. But because reactions go slower when they're cold, usually you heat it up to keep the temperature constant. So we're actually going to demonstrate it using a chemical uh, called ammonium nitrate. We're actually going to set it up, connect a thermocouple um, to read uh, how cold it's going to get. So at the moment it's reading, well, how cold this lab is at the moment. So we'll see what happens. So this stuff is caked in here. So, oh, it's a heavy jar. What it means in effect is that you are <coughs> breaking strong chemical bonds and making weak ones. And very often we want to do that. The harbour process where you take nitrogen from the air and make ammonia for fertiliser is a very good example of an endothermic reaction. You have to put in more heat than you get by formation of the chemical bonds. Okay. The thermocouple is inside, right in the middle of the beaker now. I'm just going to push that down, give us an even layer. And the thermocouple is reading the temperature inside the beaker, which is pretty much the same as out here in the lab. So what's going to happen is I'm going to add some water to this. The ammonium nitrate is going to dissolve in the water, and what will happen is the ammonium part and the nitrate part, they split apart and become solu uh, a solution. So they become ions in solution. So I've got the water here, distilled water, it will go in and we can actually see what happens. The reaction can be something quite boring, like something dissolving. What you do is you break the strong forces between the ions in the crystal and replace them with the rather weaker forces between the water molecules and the ions. So some things, when you dissolve them in water, get really cold. So you can see that immediately we get the process of, of, of you know, it being endothermic. So what that means is that it's gone from being about 15 degrees C to now minus 15, minus 16. So although it says 16.3 here, there's actually a minus symbol there. So that's how cold it's got. And in fact, if I touch this, I can feel just how cold it's become. The endothermic mixing of nitric acid and ice was used by Fahrenheit to find zero or to define zero on his temperature scale. He wanted to get something that was really, really cold. So he mixed concentrated nitric acid with snow and the temperature went straight down to the temperature which he called zero degrees Fahrenheit. It's just like as if I'm getting something, a bag of peas or whatever out of the freezer, so it's, it's really as cold as that. So it's only been a few seconds and already it's gone from being at room temperature right the way down to minus 16.